How do you like it? Medium. American cheese. American cheese is the best cheese for a cheeseburger because it melts without splitting. How much will that set me back? Nine ninety-five. That come with fries. Niels. Yes, chef. Is the fries still on? Yes, chef. Crinkle cut or julienne. Food is an interesting thing as some people sees it just as a necessity to survive, while others, like those in the movie, sees it as a type of artistic creation that reaches the level of spirituality. I firmly believe that after watching my videos, both of those type of people will be devastated. So let's make a burger today. Let's start by making our own big beautiful potato buns. Into the bowl of the stand mixer goes 415 grams of bread flour. So the big beautiful potato is gonna start with the bun. In my stand mixer goes 200 8 grams of bread flour, 75 grams of potato flour, and 37 grams of all-purpose flour. As I said it before, it's called all-purpose for a reason. A tablespoon each instant yeast and kosher salt. Half of a tablespoon is just one and a half of a teaspoon, so that of salt and instant yeast. Tiny whisk together before adding 170 grams of water. Lick my fork it together before adding 85 grams of water, 110 grams of whole milk, 55 grams of whole milk, and two eggs at room temperature, and one egg fridge temperature. Hook it up, shut it down and commence to kneading until things just come together into a shaggy ball. Fork it up, shut it down, shut it down. until everything comes together like a shaggy ball. Then to give our buns a luxuriant brioche-like texture, we're gonna start adding 50 grams of unsalted room temperature butter one tiny cube at a time. I've handmade brioche dough many times on this channel, and I have to say, folding the butter is the most annoying part. But here's what I learned. An easy way to fold in the butter is place a cube in the center of the dough, and then just fold it and rub it in. Making sure that each cube has disappeared completely into the dough before adding the next. Keep working it until it easily passes the window pane test. Once you can barely see the butter, you fold in the second one. And you want to create some movement to trick the dough into thinking that it's dealing with a stand mixer. And just keep folding and rubbing it till all the butter is incorporated. This is going to take a long time, so I'm just going to go rub it on the couch. It's not too late to add a little bit more potato flour. It is, after all, easier to add dry late in the game than it is to add wet. I wish we could just have the right ingredients so we don't need to play any games, regardless of being wet or dry. Place in a generously oiled bowl and cover with plastic wrap to bulk ferment at room temperature for about an hour and a half. Before I auction off my dough as a dinosaur turd, we're gonna shape it into a ball and cover it and rest for an hour and a half. Unless you suddenly remember that you have a dough proofer. And since we're pretending that we're working in a restaurant, we can use that. Since I'm pretending I live in a dough proofer, I can just use that. So now I'm gonna retrieve it from the bowl, weigh it, and divide it into five equal pieces. After about two hours, the dough doubled in size. Since we're doing half of his recipe, we're gonna divide it into four parts. Once divided, we're gonna roll them into tight, taut little balls. We'll first fold in the sides completely to create a smooth surface, and then we're gonna pull the ball back, keeping constant contact with the work surface. This creates the tension that makes the ball nice and tight like this. Give them a little spritz with nonstick spray and cover them with plastic wrap. Since my balls are fairly small, I'm just gonna cup it. And since this tray doesn't fit in my proving drawer, I'm inflating it with air from my nice warm lungs. And to give the buns a nice acidic garlic flavor, I'm gonna inflate the bowl with some of my nice warm breath. Which should help them rise over the next hour, during which time they should nearly double in size. After an hour, I don't know if they're doubled in size because I don't remember how big they were. Until our poke leaves an indent that doesn't really puff all the way back out. Let's do a poke test to see if they're ready. We want it to be bouncy, but not completely springing back. Next, we gotta prolifically brush these guys down with a whole egg. Now I'm gonna holistically brush these buns with some egg yolks. But so that we can adhere mountains of sesame seeds to the outside. And finally, we'll top it off with some sesame seeds. And why does everything I have off-colored? These guys are headed into a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for anywhere from 18 to 22 minutes. Now we'll put them in a 375 degree oven for about 18 minutes. Until they emerge, too big. Way too big. Not a problem in this case, because nothing in my house ever emerges too big. You know, I think my buns are actually looking pretty good. Some may say that it's better looking than the original. Next up, the matter of American cheese. A mixture of sharp cheddars, gouda, colby, and Monterey Jack. So now it's time to make cheese. With cheese. 
We're gonna use a mixture of sharp cheddar, mozzarella, and since we're making American cheese, we'll use some Oaxaca cheese, because there's nothing more American than misusing other cultures' ingredients. We're gonna bring 12 ounces of whole milk to a simmer. We'll bring three ounces of whole milk to a simmer. Into the milk, we're gonna whisk one and a half ounces of sodium citrate, a simple food additive used in molecular gastronomy that I figured they probably have on hand. And then we'll mix in a pinch of sodium that I happen to have on hand. Once that's up to a bare simmer, we're gonna add all the cheeses at once reduce the heat as low as it'll go and use an immersion blender to blend the cheese and the milk together. Now we'll add all the cheeses and use a spatula to keep stirring till everything comes together. Sort of reverse cold stone creamery, a nice hot surface upon which I can spread the cheese as thinly as possible before it sets. This ended up working like a charm. Now we'll transfer the cheese onto a silicone mat and then spread it out as evenly as possible into the fridge till it's completely cooled. Next up, the fries, which were prepared crinkle cut. In anticipation of this, I ordered a crinkle cutter, which to my disappointment wasn't even remotely sharp. Next up, the fries. In anticipation of this, I dry aged my potatoes till they are starting to look green and have these black spots. Don't buy a crinkle cutter that you can rip in half with your bare hands. I follow his advice and did not buy a crinkle cutter that can be ripped in half by hand. So I'm gonna have to shape my fries individually by cutting little corners off to give it a crinkle cut look. Why we're immediately plunging them into a pot of cold water. Once all the fries are looking even and crinkly like this, we'll put them in a pot of cold water. And adding one tablespoon each, kosher salt and white vinegar. And add a little bit of sea salt and rice wine vinegar. Now we'll put it on the stove and simmer for about 20 five minutes. I'm very carefully retrieving the fries and placing them on a wire rack. Now I'll take them out and put on the wire rack. These guys are headed into the freezer for at least four hours or until frozen solid. Now these go into the freezer for about two hours. Then they're getting their second of three cooks, a low temperature fry in 275 degree Fahrenheit. Now we'll fry them at about 275 degrees. When they're just barely changing color, we'll take them out onto a paper towel to drain. Back into the freezer they go for at least four hours or up to a few months if you want to make these ahead of time. I've never waited this much time for fries before. These better be worth it. These guys are now headed into 375 degree Fahrenheit oil for three to five minutes until deeply golden brown and crisp. Now finally we're gonna fry it at 375 for about two to three minutes. It does feel pretty crispy but I'm not sure if it's worth all that effort. Kosher salt while they're still nice and hot. And there you have it, our meticulously handcrafted crinkle cuts versus store-bought. Now we'll hit it with a generous amount of salt and here comes the most important part. This is my number one cooking secret that I haven't told anybody yet. After you cook your fries, you have to let it rest for at least 10 minutes and something magical will happen. Uh, look, let's wait for 10 minutes, we'll come back and check. Years later. This is what they turn into after about 11 minutes. This works differently for everybody, so you just gotta be patient. I'm discarding any sinew or connective tissue and cutting all the meat and fat into one inch cubes. I'm gonna quickly release my meat from the enclosement of plastic and then cut them into two inch cubes. Letting these guys hang out in the freezer for about 20 minutes before being passed through the medium plate of a thoroughly chilled meat grinder. And now it's time to pass our meat through a really chill meat grinder. As you can tell, my equipment is not only chill, but also very experienced in handling meat. I'm opting for behemoth 6 ounce balls. And then we'll turn it into 6 ounce balls. Preheat to smoking and commence to smashing. Before we start cooking the burger, let's julienne some onion. So we'll just go in from an angle and then cut towards the middle like this. So basically, you just want some thin strips like this on top of the burger. Now we'll heat some oil on a saucepan on high heat, drop in the burger, and then press it down with the parchment paper. Now we'll do the same thing to the other burger. Since we don't want it super flat, pressing it makes no difference. We're just following instructions here. As it cooks, we'll layer in the onion, so when we flip it, the onion will start caramelizing. Now is a good time to take out the sheet of cheese we made earlier with other cheeses and cut it into squares for melting. After we flip it, on goes the cheese and then we'll take it out when it's nice and melted. At this point, we have everything ready. We're just gonna assemble a classic American burger, just like my dad used to do before he left for groceries. I'm giving a second chance to QP mayo, cause my usual mayo looks sus according to all of you. And flashbacks are coming back to me as I layer in a double team of meat patties 
on my bottom bun. And finally, a little more caramelized onion, and our burger is done. It's actually looking pretty good. Ironically, it looks like it's out of a but better episode. But I still have to rely on Instagram for honest opinions. Two trailer park girls go round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Now we'll quickly clean up the countertop so we can plate everything and make it look nice and fine. Maybe the patties are too thick because when I squeeze it, it's sliding off a little bit. Alright, after adjusting the patty position, we'll place the burger on a plate and we'll scatter around our high effort, completely homemade, sort of weirdly shaped crinkle cut fries around the burger. Well, can't believe my entire afternoon is about to be consumed within 15 seconds. Quick before this gets too meta, let's cut to a slow motion burger squish. And can we get the chef's table text? Nice. All right, we'll also conduct a slow motion burger squeeze with chef's table text on the top right corner. Did you say you want more? Okay. Anyways, time to taste it and rate it 1 through 10. The patties are a little bit overcooked, but overall the burger tastes very fresh. Using buns that are made in the same day is really a game changer. It's still warm at the oven. The cheese perfectly melts into the patty, and the caramelized onion provides a hint of sweetness that brings everything together. Although, after taking a couple bites from the burger and the fries, my mouth is drier than the desert. I think the overcooked patty and the fact that I used whole wheat flour for the buns didn't really help. Overall, I think this is a great recipe, and I'll give my performance today an 8 out of 10. If you have nothing to do for an entire afternoon and craving a really well-made burger, this is the one for you. Alright, thank you.